أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my Ramadan series, Understanding Quran with Nafisa. So we are following on from the verse where we ended last session. So we're going to continue today from verse 114, inshallah. There is no good in most of their secret talks, except those encouraging charity, kindness, or reconciliation between people. And whoever does this, seeking Allah's pleasure, we will grant them a great reward. And whoever defies the messenger after guidance has become clear to them and follows a path other than that of the believers, we will let them pursue what they have chosen, then burn them in hell. What an evil end. Surely, Allah does not forgive associating others with him in worship, but forgives Anything else, whomever he wills. Indeed, whoever associates others with Allah has clearly gone far astray. Instead of Allah, they only invoke female gods. And they actually invoke none but a rebellious Satan, cursed by Allah, who said, I will surely take hold of a certain number of your servants. I will certainly mislead them and delude them with empty hopes. Also, I will order them, and they will slit the ears of the cattle, and alter Allah's creation. And whoever takes Satan as a guardian instead of Allah has certainly suffered a tremendous loss. Satan only makes them false promises, and, deluded, and deludes them with empty hopes. Truly, Satan promises them nothing but delusion. It is they, it is they who will have hell as a home and they will find no escape from it. And whoever believes and do good, we will soon admit them to gardens under which rivers flow to stay there forever and ever. Allah's promise is always true. So I'm going to pause there. And go back to verse 114, where Allah says, There is no good in most of their secret talks, except encouraging charity, kindness, or reconciliation between people. What does that mean? It means that most conversations that we have, there's not much benefit in it. And this is a warning to those of us who like to talk a lot. <laughs> okay? Those of us who are like chatterboxes, we like to talk a lot. We have to guard our tongue. The tongue is actually one of the reasons why many people will go into the hellfire. The hadith states is why a lot of people will find themselves in the, in the hellfire. Among them is the use of our tongue. The other one is the use of our private parts. And this is so obvious in this day and age. We don't think before we talk. We just... We just talk we just talk and Allah says there's no there's not much goodness in what we are saying except when we're saying things that are beneficial for example if we're encouraging charity that is an example of positive talk if we are being kind we're showing kindness in the way that we're talking we're saying good words positive words to other people we're showing them mercy we're being encouraging we're being positive there is goodness in that Allah also says or for those who are reconciling between two people who are no longer talking to one another or two people who are in an argument or in a fight and in fact is a great deed that you should try to reconcile, especially to believers who are having problems between them. Is of the good deeds that you should try to reconcile them and bring them back together. Now, before you insert yourself in their issues, <laughs> you better make sure that you are the type of person who can, who can give good counsel, right? And that you understand and you know the situation properly. Sometimes what people have done I've had someone do this to me before. There was a situation that I had with somebody else. And 
for a while, I just chose to stay away. Didn't say anything against them, didn't do anything wrong to them. I just chose to stay away because the behavior that was coming to me was very negative. So I just chose to just pull myself back. This individual went to the person whom I chose to pull myself, pull myself away from, said all these things about me for years, right? Said this thing about me to that person. That person has not spoken to me in over a decade. Then one day they see me in a gathering of people. Then they decide they're going to attack me on behalf of who? On behalf of what they heard from the other side. There is no talking to me. There is no asking me what happened. There is no nothing. They just decided to come and attack. In the midst of others. Now, the Nafisa before, oh baby, <laughs> I would have put you in your place right there. But I decided, you know what? I'm going to let Allah fight this for me. I'm good. She thought she embarrassed me. She embarrassed herself. Because it was so awkward in the, among the people around me. And I said... This is one of the effects of what hypocrites do. They go around and they spread stuff and they go around and they take sides without understanding the situation and then they attack. You don't know. Perhaps whom you're attacking is perhaps the innocent person in the situation had you gotten your facts right. From some of the previous videos, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't get yourself involved in things that's not your business until you verified first. Because when you don't verify you may end up harming yourself by harming the other person who is actually the innocent individual. You may end up doing that all because you want to insert yourself in th things that's none of your business. Some of us, we don't know how to wear things. So even before you go and give the advice, you need to think about how am I going to put this across? So it doesn't come across that I'm blaming anybody but perhaps I can inject some, some goodness here so that it can be received. Because sometimes it's not what we say, it's how we say it, right? And we're all humans, can happen. But we should take a moment to pause and think before we go and insert ourselves in things that have nothing to do with us so we don't embarrass ourselves. That is very important. And so Allah says that if you, and so Allah says, if you're able in a good way to reconcile between two people, then that is a great conversation to have. But it must be done with wisdom and with tact. You see this thing called tact? A lot of us don't have it. You go to the, to the person who's being oppressed and you bash them because how dare you don't forgive the other person. You claim to be a Muslim, you claim to be a believer, you should just forgive this person for whatever wrong they've done to you. But that other individual is persistent in their sin. They are very clever. They're very narcissistic in the way that they're moving. So they're gathering, they're, they're gathering all their supporters. You come and you attack the innocent person who's already burdened enough by what they've experienced. Or you sit and you watch the other person oppress. Then when they've done doing their oppression, then you go to the person who was oppressed and you're like, but you're a Muslim, so you should just forgive them. But you sat and you watched the oppression happen. Instead of you to go to the one who is doing the oppression, and let them know that that was wrong before you come to the other person to tell them to forgive. You're like, no, we can't go to the person who's doing the oppression because you know what they're like. They are no, we all know what they're like. We can't go to them. Oh, because of their age, we can't go to them. So you let the oppressor continue doing their oppression. Then you go and attack the innocent person and you blame them using the deen and accuse, and then you use Islam to further blame the person who is already being wronged for them not doing for the forgiveness. Subhanallah. How messed up is this? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that if we see someone being oppressed, we should do two things. We should help the one who is doing the oppression and we should help the one who is being oppressed. And the Sahaba said, O Prophet of Allah, we understand how to help the one who's being oppressed, but how do we help the one who's doing the oppression? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said by stopping them. By stopping them, 
Don't sit there, watch them do their oppression and then blame the other one for not forgiving. Subhanallah, subhanallah. We, we, we oppress one another in ways that we don't even understand. So Allah says, if you're able to reconcile two people who are arguing, it's a good thing. And Allah says, whoever does this, seeking Allah's pleasure, Allah will grant them a great reward. So speaking good words is a, is a way of doing good deeds. Sometimes people are going through hardships. Sometimes all they need to hear is a positive word, a word of encouragement from us. Cost nothing. May Allah help us to be able to apply that. Ameen. In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 115, and whoever defies the messenger after guidance has come, become clear to them and follows a path other than the believers, we will let them pursue what they have chosen. Then we will burn them in hell. What does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about those whom Islam has come to them, the truth has come to them. Then they decide, I don't want this. I don't want this, I'm out of here. <laughs> this Islam thing is not for me. The truth has come to them. Then they themselves decided to throw it away. Allah says he's going to leave them in their misguidance. Unless, of course, they choose to return. Then Allah will accept them. But Allah says if they are insistent upon leaving Allah's path, Allah will lead them. He will lead them to pursue whatever path they want. Allah will let them. In this life, we have free will. Allah has given us the ability to choose. That's what free will is. That you can choose what you like. Here's an apple. Here's a banana. You choose. Allah's not forcing you to eat the apple or to eat the banana. You choose. So we have free will. Right? So Allah says, if they choose to leave the truth after the truth has already come to them, Allah will allow them to go after whatever it is that they want. But then Allah says what? The consequence is what? That Allah will afterwards throw them into the hellfire. That is going to be their place. And Allah says, what an evil end. What an evil end. Verse 116, Allah says, Surely Allah does not forgive associating others with him in worship, but forgives anything else of whomever he wills. Indeed, whoever associates others with Allah has clearly gone astray. There's, there's, there's just no other way to see this. If you're doing any form of shirk, you've gone astray. If you have the fortune teller, if you're going to read your palms, if you're going to, if you're reading horoscopes, if, if you believe what somebody tells you about the future, only Allah has knowledge of the unseen. Only Allah knows what's going to happen to the, in the future. But you go to all of these, whatever they call themselves, some even astaghfirullah call, call themselves sheikhs. Some call themselves sheikhs and they're doing nothing but fortune telling. They're fortune telling. They're, they're looking into the future. They're using the other creations of Allah to help them do their work so that they can collect a couple of pennies. It's become a business now, apparently. <laughs> Subhanallah. It's become a business now. Right? Allah says, if you associate partners with him, you have committed a great sin and you have gone far astray. He doesn't just say you're on your way out. He said you've gone. You, you're lost already. You're out. Then Allah continues to say, instead of Allah, they only invoke female gods. Hmm. And they actually invoke none but a rebellious Satan. A rebellious shaitan. Who's the rebellious shaitan? Allah says, the one who is cursed by Allah. Who says, I will surely take hold of a certain number of your servants. Who said that? Shaitan. Iblis said, when Allah asked him to prostrate to Adam because of his, his ego and feeling like he's better than Adam, he says, I will not prostrate to Adam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to leave, to leave Jannah. And he says, okay, but I want permission to be able to influence the children of Adam. And I will do what? I will surely take hold of a certain number of your servants, O oh Allah. I will take hold of your servants. The, 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 the arrogance, like the audacity, the audacity. You are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you dared Allah. Allah said he is cursed. He is cursed. And this is no joke. When we do these, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, if you do this, Allah curses you. It's no joke. Because another cursed individual is the devil himself. So these people come up with these gods. They have these female gods that they worship. The female god is actually who? Allah's making it clear to us. The female gods that these people worship is actually shaitan himself. 
it's Iblis himself. Iblis, the one who says that his duty in life is going to be to take the believers away from the path of Allah and to drag them to hell with him because he does not want to go to hell alone. Iblis hates the children of Adam. Allah says he is an avowed enemy to you. I'm, I'm getting goosebumps as I say this. Allah says that Iblis is an enemy. Don't act like he's your friend. He's not on your side. He hates your guts because he hates our father, Adam, alayhi salam. He hated him. Iblis's job is to take as many of us to hell with him. And Allah has better plans than Iblis. And Allah continues to tell us what Iblis said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iblis said, Shaitan, he says, I will certainly mislead them and delude them with empty hopes. These are amongst the schemes of Shaitan. He will give you empty promises and empty hopes. And Shaitan said this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is one of the ways that he's going to misguide the children of Adam so that they end up in hell with him. Also, I will order them and they will slit the ears of the cattle and alter Allah's creation. Alter Allah's creation. What does that remind you of? Because when I read this verse, what I'm seeing is plastic surgery in this 21st century that we're living in apparently. We're also advanced. We're all so advanced that we're all about changing the creation of Allah. Changing the creation of Allah. And subhanAllah, guys, the way in which Iblis, Shaitan, is taking us for a ride is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So what would mankind do? So what would some of the children of Adam do? They will go around changing what Allah has created. I don't like the color of my skin. I'm too dark. I'm going to go buy the bleaching cream and I'm going to bleach myself white. I don't like myself. I'm too white. My skin is too pale. What do I do? I'm going to go get some tan and, and like sit under these sunbeds or whatever, burn my skin until I'm looking exotic. I don't like this about myself. So I'm going to go change it. You know, these days, what the youth are being told is if you don't like how you are, if you can afford it, just go change it. Like what's the big deal? You want a big bum? Just go ahead and go get plastic surgery with your toothpick legs and your bum looking like crazy and do whatever you want. Do you know how many women have died with this stupid butt implant things that they've been doing to themselves? They go for these operations. These dodgy doctors pump whatever kind of nonsense into their bodies and their bodies begin to eat itself. There was a lady whose story I was watching from uh, I think we'll say a documentary or one of those shows. She went to do some of these like bum stuff, implants, and her body started eating itself. It, it rots. Like when she sits down, sometimes she'll have to wipe herself because of the, the liquid that's oozing and the stench of the liquid that's oozing out of her body. Her skin has become like a, a really dodgy color because it's, it's basically being destroyed. All because of a look. Everybody's trying to, trying to look like the Kardashians, who themselves aren't even real. This is one of the ways and the deceptions of shaitan. He will make you change the creation of Allah until you look yourself in the mirror. You don't even know who you are no more. You, they, they show you a childhood picture of yourself. You're like, who's that? <laughs> you don't even recognize a childhood picture of yourself. These are among the, the, the schemes of shaitan. And can you believe it? Allah told us in the Quran. The Quran that we don't have time to read. Allah already warned us. If we knew this, we would be more cautious of all of these things. But how can we know when we don't make time or give importance to the book of Allah? So Allah says this is the promise of shaitan. Right? And Allah says, and whoever takes as a guardian instead of Allah. Whoever takes shaitan as a guardian instead of Allah. Allah says, Allah has certainly... Allah says, they have certainly suffered a tremendous loss. It, there, there is no if or buts about it. If you take shaitan as your guide, you are in nothing but loss. Of, lately, I've been watching all these stories of individuals who claim they were witches before, they were whatever before, they were worshippers of the devil. And when they explain to you some of the evil and rituals that they've done, Guys, they, these are scary documentaries to watch. Apparently, they then found Jesus. 
and, and they've changed now. But some of the things that they tell you, you will realize that it's nothing but a trap. Nothing but a trap. A trap. So Allah says in the next verse, verse 120, he says, Shaitan only makes them false promises and he deludes them with empty hopes. Truly, Shaitan promises them nothing but delusion. Shaitan promises them nothing but delusion, empty hopes and false promises. Whoever follows Shaitan's way is in a trap. And those who have really followed him, they can vouch for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that truly that is a life of a trap. There, there is no peace of mind. All these people who sell their souls to the devil for whatever part of the dunya they want, they don't have peace of mind. There is no such thing as peace of mind. They are forever in depression, all day, every day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is they who have hell as their home and they will find no escape from it. Shaitan and those who decide to follow him Hell is their home. Allah says, those who believe and do good will soon, we will soon admit them, Allahu Akbar, into gardens under which rivers flow, to them to stay there forever. Allahu Akbar. And Allah's promise is always true. In opposition to shaitan's promise that is false, Allah's promise is always true. And those and whose words and whose words is more truthful than Allah's. There is no one whose word is more truthful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word. Indeed, Allah is the truth. His word is, is true. His prophet is true. His books are true. Everything about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth and we admit to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the enemies, from among shaitan, from among the jinns and mankind, all those who worship shaitan, who follow his way, who are in association with him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us as a mercy from himself, as a benefit as a mercy from himself in this month of Ramadan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us if any of us have gone astray in any way, shape or form. I hope this video has given you the insight that you need to separate yourself and stay far away from shaitan and his associates and for you to cling to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to hold it nearest and dearest to your heart because one day you will go to your grave and you will be there alone and we will have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May our end be a good end.